There are a ton of Linux distributions out there. And from time to time, I discover distributions that I've just never heard of. And when I do, I usually exclaim, what the fuck is that distro? So that led me to creating a series where I install these distributions that I've never heard of before and either mock them for existing or applaud them for existing. And mostly it's mock, but we'll see. Maybe it's possible that we find a distribution that's actually good that nobody's ever heard of before. You never know. Weirder things have happened. So today we're going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution called Zelf OS. Now, I have no clue if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It starts with a X, so I'm assuming it's Zelf OXS, but it could be something different. Who knows? Anyways, what this is, is an Arch-based distribution that has DWM as its default window manager. And as you know, I'm a big DWM guy, and there aren't really that many Linux distros out there that ship with DWM as their default, as their main window manager. In fact, I don't think there is one. Now, I know like Arco offers a DWM install, and actually I can't think of another Linux distro that has DWM as something that's installed on an ISO. So, uh, Zelf is actually somewhat unique in that way. Now, what we're going to do is install it and take a look at it today. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've loaded up Zelf OS in a virtual machine using Vert Manager, and this is what it looks like out of the box. Now we're going to go ahead and try to get this to be full screen. So I'm going to open up a terminal, which I can get to by super enter, which is a good default. And we're just going to type in rexrander dash s1920, if I can type, by 10, 1080. Again, if I can type, and that will get us full screen, which is good. Now, as you can see, this is a DWM that has been highly customized. And if you have heard of a of a rice called Chad WM, this looks a lot like that. So I'm wondering if they took Chad WM and put it on an ISO because this does come with its own ISO. You can just install it just like I have. So let's see how this is actually installed. So in order to get to the installer, we have to do, go into D menu and type in install sys. And that's going to, I'm not actually sure what it's going to do. Okay, so it's going to bring up the Calamari's installer. So this is the Zelf Linux installer. I don't know whether or not that should come up by default. It probably should, but at least they do put that explicitly in their documentation that you have to run that command in order for you to get this. So let's go ahead and run through the installer real quick. Next. Okay, so we're gonna, we got some options here of what we can install. Let's see what it means by package managers. So Flatpak, GNOME Software, Pamac, Paru. Okay, so we're gonna install Paru. I don't think we need anything else there. So the Unicode stuff we can leave blank because we're in a, in a virtual machine. Optimus is going to be for something for NVIDIA. These, the rest of these are graphics drivers. And I believe we should be okay here for graphics drivers, but we'll go ahead and install the open source ones just in case. So let's go ahead and hit next. And then we have some general packages that we can install. So accessories, Kava, Flameshot, Speedtest, CLI, Stow, TLDR, Zathura, uh, MOC, and a Zelf mock icon get. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so we got icon candy here by default. So that's just going to give us PyCom. And then uh, task managers, HTOP, and which we will go ahead and install. Asian fonts, which we don't need right now. Uh, system fetch applications, which we can go ahead and install NeoFetch. It'll save us from having to do it later. Uh, development, Python 3 is always usually a good idea. And the rest of these can, be, uh, we don't, I mean, usually I do get in NeoVim and uh, lately I've been playing around with Emacs, obviously, so we'll, uh, we could usually do that, but we don't need to do that. And this machine here, disk and USB tools, that's just gparted, which you don't need internet browsers. So we'll go ahead and install Firefox. I don't know what it would come with by default, but we want at least one web browser. We don't need any email or social clients, but we can see what they got here. Claws, Evolution. Geary, Kmail, Thunderbird, and Trajita. And I've never heard of that one before. Uh, let's see here. Discord, Element, Fractal, Mumble, NeoChat, Pigeon, Signal, Telegram, and Wire. Let's see. LibreOffice, which I'd normally install. Password Manager. Oh, 
Usually I install Bitwarden. Our terminal emulators, we want Alacrity for sure. Video tools, uh, video players, VLC. So you got quite a bit of options here for stuff that you can install, including Caden Live and OBS and uh, YouTube BL. All right, so let's go ahead and hit next. And we will select a time zone and hit next again. Uh, the U English US and default is correct. And then we'll go ahead and erase disk. We don't need a swap. And we'll go ahead next and we'll enter our credentials. So Matt and Matt is good again. And this is Zelf OS VM. And then we'll enter a very strong and complicated password. And then we want to have that to be the same password for the administrator account so we can use sudo. And then we'll go ahead and hit next and install and install now. Then we'll wait for this to install and I'll cut the video here. And when it comes back, we'll get started on looking at what the hell Zelf OS actually is. Okay, so as you can see, we have an error here. Now I'm assuming because they tried to install Paru, according to this, from the community repos. And Paru is not in the community repos. It's not in the AU. Well, it might be in the AUR, but it's it's definitely not in the community repos. You can't install it from there. You have to build it from scratch. So I'm assuming it got to this point and just completely, you know, boinked. So we're going to try this again one last time. So let's go ahead and get close here, see what it does. And it takes us back to this here. So let's go ahead and go here into, into D menu and do system uh, oh, install system, install SYS, SYS, there we go, we'll try again, it only gets one extra try, uh, then we'll say that this is a complete failure, now I believe that this is a project by just one guy, so I'm not going to lambast it too, too hard, and it's not like the other WTF videos I've done, where those distros were very high ranked on DistroWatch. This one here is just something that I came across while doing the internet thing. So let's go ahead and do this again. I think I'm going to leave everything default this time. I'm not going to select anything. So we're just going to go ahead and hit next, and uh, next, and then next, and then next again. Manual partitioning. Interestingly, it's going to make us manual partition this time. Um, okay. Well, we'll do that then. Okay, so let's see. We'll delete this and then hit create. And then all oh, this looks fine. So it's going to use Butter Butterfest by default, which is good. And then we want this to have mount point of root. And then hit OK. And then I believe we should be able to go ahead and hit next. Okay. And then we'll enter credentials again. And then we'll enter our strong and complicated password, as we say. And then hit next again. And then we're going to hit install. And we'll see if this thing will go. If uh, No, that was a complete failure. I'm guessing that we're going to have to go ahead and shut this down, recreate the virtual machine, and uh, start over again. Okay, so what we're going to do is just do... Uh, we'll go up here to... Uh and then view full screen. And then... Okay, and we'll wait for this to start up again. We'll see if this works. This will be the last try. I'm only giving it this third try because I think I messed up the partitions. I'm assuming that I didn't create a, a, a like a boot manager or something. I don't know. Some, some, something, something went wrong with the partitioning when I did the manual partitioning. So we'll we'll blame that second failure on me, not the OS. A few moments later. Okay, so here we are again. We're gonna go. We're gonna ignore the fact that it's not in full screen. Just do install S Y S. Okay, and then we'll try again. Next, we're just gonna leave everything default again. 
and then erase disk no swap is fine oh we, i didn't even notice this here before uh, you can choose butterfest xext4 or ext3 i'm going to choose ext4 because that usually works better in virtual machines so we'll just choose that just in case maybe that was the problem but anyways let's go ahead and do this okay Hit next and install and install and we're gonna I will cut the video here again and if we come back and it's installed hooray if we come back and there's another error we're just going to call this a complete and utter failure and uh, be sad about it for about five seconds and then we'll wrap it up okay after about three or four minutes maybe closer to five we now are ready to restart this thing and go right into the OS so we're gonna hit done here and it will restart or it should restart is it gonna restart why isn't it restarting I'm being impatient I feel like I should do the jeopardy theme a few moments later well I have to say the start for Zelf Linux or Zelf OS or whatever the fuck they want to call it. Not so profit promising. Oh, we have something coming up here. I've never seen it do that before. I mean, that's a weird Xorg error thing where the, the wallpaper is still up, but we have text up here along the top. Whatever the fuck is going on. I have never seen that happen before. Usually, when you get that text after you shut down from a... a, a a live environment I mean, what you do in every single uh, like Arch Linux that I've ever seen it, usually X is killed and X is what would be displaying that wallpaper I and mean, we also have like I don't know if you can see this but down here there's, there's like an A if, like what is going on here this has to be a virtual machine problem okay here we go all right so the, the grub the grub part, part of this still said Arch Linux let's go ahead and hit view There was an error there, but I didn't get to see it. Um, okay. Okay. And then we'll enter our password. And we're back into the operating system, which is good. Okay. Interestingly enough, the bar that we had in the live environment is nowhere to be seen here. Uh, and I'm not sure why. So let's go ahead and get this full screen. So we did get Pac-Man, which which is good. Um, okay. Why, why can't I type in the terminal? Okay. You want to know what? I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into a TTY. I wonder if I go up here, sit key combination to uh, this one here. Oh, okay. What the fuck? <laughs> what the? <laughs> okay. We'll try again. What, what about this one here? Okay. What about the third one? No, none of these are working. Okay, so this is an utter failure so far. This is not a good experience. So whoever's working on this, I don't mean to be down on your project, but obviously you have some work to do. Uh, I'm guessing that what I'm experiencing here is a, uh, a compositor problem. Because uh, when you install a compositor in a VM, a lot of times you get errors, and that's what we're experiencing now. So let's go ahead and force this off, and we will start it again. Okay, so we didn't get an error that time. Let's go ahead and get into full screen. I really need to learn the full screen key binding. I'm sure there is one. What the fuck? No, seriously, what the, f what the flying fuck is going on? What is going on here? Seriously, what is going on here? I've never... <laughs> These, there are so many problems. Ah! Okay, um, we got a gigantic cursor and a, a blue screen. Okay. What's going on? Why must you hate me? Why? 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 Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can get into a TTY now. The answer to that question is no, we cannot. Okay. All right, here's what we're going to do. Because I'm extraordinarily patient, we're quitting Vert Manager. 
we're going to start VirtualBox. And we're going to open up a new one here, and we're going to call this Zelf OS. We're gonna, this is literally the fourth time of installing this on this video. You cannot doubt my dedication. Okay, and this is Linux, and this is Arch Linux, 64-bit. Next, again, we'll give it we'll give it eight gigabytes this time just because you know reasons and then virtual hard disk and then okay and then we'll give it like that's good enough i don't care it doesn't matter we'll give it all of the video ram that we can we'll go ahead and select the disk here and all the way down here here and open and choose and we'll go into one thing about VirtualBox that I don't, I've never understood is why you can change all the settings from this one page except for the number of CPU cores that you have to go to the settings for. That just always have, has driven me absolutely bonkers. And even more weird is if you go into the, the settings and choose the video memory, you can only go up to 128 megabytes. But if you change it out here, you can go to 256. The inconsistency bothers me. But anyways, let's go ahead and do this again. Fourth time is the charm, as they say. Sometimes, Vert Manager just doesn't work well with certain distros. So we're again giving this a benefit of a doubt, a benefit of the doubt of a doubt. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's really late at night. But we're just gonna say that it's of the Vert Manager problem. And we'll try again in vir VirtualBox. And this time we won't install Python. We'll just keep that part out. So D, install sys. Okay. We're just going to go ahead and leave this in, not in full screen, because we're just going to go through this really quick. And this, I'm I'm wondering, you want to, we'll go ahead and install the open source drivers just in case, but we will uninstall this eye candy because we don't need PyCom on a virtual machine. Raise disk. We're gonna again go to ext4 just in case, because Butterfest sometimes doesn't play well in virtual machines. It, you sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So let's go ahead and hit next. What's interesting is that when you usually the current and after, we'll see what the name of the distro is here. Right here it says generic. That's really weird. I've never seen that before. So we're gonna go ahead and enter our credentials one last time. Okay, and then next, install, install now. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video one last time so that you don't have to set through this again. And uh, I'll come back when it's done. You know, if it gets done. Okay. We're here again. And because VirtualBox sometimes doesn't remove the ISO, we're going to just go ahead and shut this down the regular way. So we're going to in go into a terminal and do sudo shut down now and we'll shut this down that way a few moments later i will have to say so far not impressed we're still waiting for this to shut down i could just force it to shut down but I, you know, i'm trying to be a patient person it's a new experience for me i don't think i'm succeeding what the a stop job is running so that means it's trying to unmount something a few moments later. Become a Linux YouTuber, they said. It would be easy, they said. A few moments later. Literally only 25 seconds is more than it will give. We can wait that long. We really can. I've now been recording this for 32 minutes. Now, you won't see the whole 32 minutes because I'm going to cut quite a bit of that out. The parts that were you'd actually rate waiting for things to install or, you know, not install. But still, you can you know, kind of empathize with how long this video has been going so far. And it's still, I mean, we haven't even, I haven't even got into the operating system yet. Okay, so as I suspect, expect, so suspected, uh, they did not remove the, the ISO. Now, I understand you can go through and reorder the boot order for in VirtualBox. I just never do it because I'm, you know, not smart enough to do it or something. I don't know something like that so we're, we're here again again uh we noticed that they did not change the grub menu to their their linux or their distro name which is fine but it definitely is something that you notice 
So we're going to, and we're not seeing any of that weird stuff on the display manager that we saw in vert manager, which is a good thing. Here we go. Now, uh, and we do get the bar. The bar showed up here and we get, we have a uh, terminal. So we can do X render dash S nineteen twenty. It's not 29 by 1080. Again, Matt, seriously, learn how to type. There we go. And, wow, it's here. So let's go ahead and do an update. Pacman-syu. And then do yes. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there was no error that, there that asked me for a password. That's interesting. Okay. While it's doing that, that shouldn't take too long here. No, it's almost done. So we can just watch that for just a second. I've learned to always do an update because then I can go through and install things if I want to. Especially in, uh, I learned more to do that in Debian based issues because a lot of times app doesn't work correctly if you don't do an update first. But anyways, we can clear that and now we can do sudo. If I can type, good lord, sudo, let's zoom in here. Pacman dash s neo fetch h top. Those are the two things we need. Again, not a sign there that it actually asked me for a password. So it doesn't matter. We're fine. Uh, we gotta we have neo fetch now. No special ASCII art here. It still says we're just using Arch Linux. So this is just really all it does is install Arch Linux. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, so this is just another graphical way of installing Arch Linux. Uh, this is ST for the terminal, so the default terminal is a suckless terminal. Uh, it uses ZSH by default, which is an interesting choice and not a lot of distributions choose to, to change their shell. I'm all for that. I use ZSH as my default shell as well. This is DWM. It uses JetBrains Mono Nerd font, which is also happy for me because that's my font as well. Okay, so that is NeoFetch. We'll go ahead now and cd into dot config and ls here and see what we have in terms where our configuration files are because so I don't see any configuration files here in the configuration file so we'll cd up a level and do an ls here uh, ls dash a is what we're going to end up having to do here okay so we have dot cache dot mfc dot config dot bin and that's literally it okay so let's go ahead and go to another workspace here and open up Firefox, which is not installed. Um, so Firefox is not installed. Brave is installed. Okay. So Brave comes as the default browser instead of Firefox, which is, again, an interesting choice. It's not, I, I believe it's a choice that a lot more distros are going to end up making in the future. Um, but we'll, we'll search for Linux, and we will uh, see if it can tell us where the configuration files are. Source code for all suckless software go goes into opt. Okay, that's a little worrying because if you make any changes to that, every time he updates his stuff, you'll, you're likely to get your stuff overwritten. That's not a great thing. So maybe that's the reason why more distros don't use DWM because they can't really update it and then have people keep their configs. Uh, but we'll go ahead and search for this. So cd slash opt, and we'll do an ls here. And here we go. So cd zelf dwm dash git, and we'll do an ls here. That's the weirdest dwm folder I've ever seen in my life. So, so source is gonna, probably gonna be where all of our stuff here. Okay, so vim config, def.h okay of course matt vim is let's see if vim is is installed by default it is good okay so what we're trying to find out here is multiple things we want to look at the key bindings and we want to see if we can figure out what patches he's using or they're using uh so we we know they're using some kind of gaps patch here which is good we have a system tray patch okay um, we have, so these are your colors here. Okay, we have the tagging. So we have the, the or the patch that will allow you to use uh, icons in the bar. 
so that will, that will allow you to change the tag names. Um, let's see here. So there's a couple of them that we know for sure. So we also have a, a couple different layouts here, but not all the layouts. We have uh, tile, monocle, and floating, which are all default DWM ones. But we also have one called centered master. So that's going to be another patch. Uh, mod 4, which is the Windows key, is the default mod key. So we have mod B to toggle the bar, which is default in DWM. Uh, we have mod control W to go into tab mode. We have mod J, K, and the regular default bindings to move windows around, looks like. Um, we also have some bindings here to change the gaps, which are also default when you install that particular patch. Okay, and then we have toggle gaps. These look. This looks like almost precisely like my configuration file. It's, even the spacing looks similar. <laughs> funny they probably are all like that so mod q is to quit mod t's will toggle layouts uh, mod f will go to floating let's see here we have the regular key bindings to toggle between monitors and we have the regular key bindings to toggle between uh, tags and then we also have mod shift e restore win hide win so mod so that must be a, that must be a, a patch that I've never heard of before. So mod E hides the window. Mod shift E restores the window. So you, there's a, like a hide window uh, thing. That has to be another patch because that's not default. Okay, so that is the configuration file. Again, I don't care for the configuration files being where they are. I would prefer them to be in the like, in your .config file so that you don't because I don't believe we can even edit this. You'd have to change the permissions or use sudo. And also, if these things are updated through an update, you'd have a huge problem. Now, something interesting is that he's uh, importing a theme. So theoretically, you, there could be other themes that he could use other than Nord. That's cool. That's not something that I've ever seen before. And I didn't even know you could do that. Uh, I wonder what Nord.h actually looks like. Um, let's actually see if we can find out here. Uh, ls. Ls. Nord.h, is that in here? No, cd themes. Nord. Oops. And then do, do it. Ls, if there's anything else in here. Uh, vim nord.h. So all that does is import the, the colors. But that's cool. I did not know you could do that in a separate file. I've learned something that makes this whole thing wor worthwhile, I think. Okay. So we've looked at the key bindings. We've discovered some of the patches that he, the this developer has used. Uh, probably not all of them. I'm guessing this is CD up a level and CD up a level and up another level, back into the opt folder, and then they're using DWM blocks in order to do this bar up here. Now, at the beginning of this video, way back at the beginning of this video, when this vid video started like three days ago. Uh, I mentioned that this looks very much like Chad WM, which is another forker DWM, but that developer uses just an, an X at root script. So this is a little bit different, at least. Okay, let's go ahead and just lastly, since how we spent so much time getting installed, see if we can figure out what programs are installed. So, okay, so I installed Rofi. This will be easier. So we have htop which i installed cavantum nitrogen to set wallpapers and that looks in zathura for that and vim so that's literally it and oh we have a ranger here so this is a very very minimal and brave is the what we have a, I, I i really shouldn't skip over things uh pacman uh pa pc man fm is your file manager we have brave for the the uh browser cavantum to change themes Nitrogen here to change wallpaper. Uh, Qt5 settings, which will change the theme for Qt uh, applications. Uh, Vim, the volume icon, and Zathura. That's literally all of the, the install programs that you get. Uh, and so if you're... In, <laughs> okay, so that is ZelfOS. There's not much more we can go through and, and, and look through on this. This is just a DWM install. 
uh, with some patches. I wish they would go through and list all the patches that they've done. I would love to know more because it's really actually kind of hard to know what patches are in DWM or have been applied to DWM unless somebody lists them. Uh, I, I found some of them, obviously, but I'm pretty sure I didn't find all of them. Now, another thing that I I noticed when I was going through and installing Rofi is that the ST here has been patched because the, it has scrolling by default. Uh, or has scrolling and that's not there by default so st has some patches now i'm not as familiar with patches for st because i don't use st as my daily driver so if you're going to use this you'll have to know that st has been patched as well i'm assuming it also has things like colors uh, and uh, icon support and stuff patched in because we do have icon support here so uh, that does exist anywho that is Zelf OS or Zelf Linux. Uh, to answer the question, WTF is it's basically Arch Linux with DWM installed by default, and it's pretty. It definitely does have a certain aesthetic to it, so it's not just you know stock DWM, which is good. Uh, I think that if you're, I mean, at least this person has put some effort into it, and that's good. Uh, I will say that it does not install well in Vert Manager. Because it worked fine in VirtualBox, I'm assuming that all the problems I had in the first three quarters of this video were all because of Vert Manager. So learn learn from my mistakes and don't install this in Vert Manager. Install it in VirtualBox or install it on hardware. I don't know how this would install on hardware. It's an Arch Linux install, so it'd probably install just fine. And you do have those, those options in the installer to install certain drivers and stuff, which is good. So... Uh, if you are looking for a way to install Arch Linux and prefer DWM by default, maybe this is an option for you. Personally, I would say install something like, uh, just install Arch Linux. Install the vanilla Arch Linux. If you don't want to go through the setup, you can always use something like Endeavor OS, or you could go through and use one of the many, many Arch install scripts that are out there. That's probably going to be better for you because then you kind of know what's going on inside DWM because you're building it yourself. So bottom line is it's pretty, but I probably want to use it. So anyways, that is it for us this video. Uh, the final record time is just close to 50 minutes, which is, um, I don't even know what to say about that. I mean, <laughs> thank you for it, manager, I guess. Anyways, thank you for everybody for watching. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, make sure you leave a like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you do all that stuff, hit the notification bell, all of that. I really do appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Patrick L, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Knife and Tools, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, and the BSDs Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.